everybody. Welcome into Sports Talk Chicago. My name is John Zaglore. Great to have you here. Channel 59.3 B Pod TV and Roku. Big show for today. We're going to catch you up on the Bears and what's happened the past couple of weeks while I've been gone. Plus, preview what to expect this weekend as they take on the Arizona Cardinals. And it's not going to be a good one. Before we get started, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook at John Zaglore. If you want to watch more of this show, Search up Sports Talk Chicago on YouTube or go to sportstalkchicago.com. If you want to watch more shows from the BPOD TV network, all you have to do is search up BPOD TV on YouTube. Well, nice to be back. Did I miss anything? Someone catch me up? <laughs> you know, usually I start a video with, I want to start today with this again today. I don't know where to start. I'm going to do my best to recount what's happened over the past week and make sense of it. Near the end, we'll talk about the Bears and Cardinals, which should be a colossal loss, but I don't know where to start here. I guess we should go back before Thanksgiving, where Matt Nagy was supposedly going to be fired after the big game. I will always contend that report was true. A lot of Bears media, Bears Twitter, crashed it. Oh, it didn't happen. Bad reporting. The report came from a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. I firmly believe in my heart, I'll always believe in my heart, that the report came out, Bears saw it, not of spite. They chose not to fire Matt Nagy yet. And in the end, I guess I'm grateful. At least, hopefully, I'll be healthier when Matt Nagy does get the boot and I can make tons of videos about it and bask in the glow of the real problem for the Chicago Bears. That was supposed to happen. I know it. I believe it. Now, I don't have any sourcing. Not an insider here. This is just suspicion. I firmly believe he was supposed to be axed after that game, no matter what. By the way, based on the way the Bears played that game, he should have been axed anyways, but that's besides the point. Matt Nagy should have been fired. And yet we all sit here today still waiting to see if they'd fire him. New report came out today saying that Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy may not be inseparable. They might keep Ryan Pace and bring in a new head coach. Excuse me. Both of them are to blame. You know, I've dealt with my fair share of Nagy defenders, Pace defenders too. Everybody says it's the quarterback, right? Before it was Mitch Trubisky. Mitch is gone now. Oh, it's Matt Nagy. When will we say, when will we come to an agreement? It's everybody. It's not just Nagy. It's not just the quarterback. It's everybody. Everyone. All the way from the top. All the way. Who hired Brian Pace? Ownership. And Ed Phillips who hired Matt Nagy. Ownership. Pace. Ed Phillips. Everybody played a role in that hiring. Oh, he's an offensive guru. Great coach. Yeah, good one. (laughs) Never met an offensive guru who claimed his quarterback for not performing. Then shipped him out of town, brought in his own quarterback whom he wanted in the draft, and uh, that's not working out too well either, yet. You know, Andy Reid doesn't just go through quarterbacks. The worst off, blame it on them. Hey, Alex Smith, yeah, you sucked, and it's your fault. We'll bring in Patrick Mahomes. No, Alex Smith had a great year. It brought in Mahomes to learn. He did. Goodbye, Alex Smith. It worked. That quarterback worked in that system. Why? Well, Andy Reid's a good coach. He knows what it means to get the best out of a quarterback. It's not forcing them to conform to you. You, instead, conform to them. The Bears have never done that under Matt Nagy. Not once. Look, I'm not going to say there's sabotage going on, but I find it a bit odd how on Thanksgiving, 
Andy Dalton got to throw the ball a lot, didn't he? 300 yards, one touchdown, had a great game. I was happy. My question is, though, why does Justin Fields not throw the ball that much? Why is he not throwing the ball 30, 40 times a game? Why? You know, that's why there's a number disparity. Now, Fields hasn't done great, I understand, but there's a numerical disparity between Andy Dalton and Justin Fields. So you thought, you all thought, I'd side with Andy Dalton. Not so fast. I'm looking at this objectively. Why does Andy Dalton have better numbers than Justin Fields? By numbers, I mean rate stats. Obviously not totals. Why? Sure, it could be that Dalton's a bit more experienced. Been around longer, he could handle NFL defenses and bad NFL offensive line, sure. What about the alternative? Why is Andy Dalton doing better than Justin Fields when he plays? Why does he have a better completion percentage? Why does he have the same amount of touchdowns? Well, that's right, because in three games started, is 112 passing attempts. Fields has started in eight games. He's attempted the pass 198 times. Eight games, eight starts, 198 attempts. It's about 25 a game, give or take. It's not really a lot when you think about it. How about we go 112 divided by three? Three starts for Andy Dalton, 112 attempts, 37, 37 attempts. Simply put, when Andy Dalton's in, the Bears pass the ball more. When Justin Fields is in, they rarely pass the ball. And I'd love to know the explanation for that, too. The run game's been the same all year. It's been effective. So there should be no reason why you run more with Fields than you do Dalton. That has nothing to do with it. It's a matter of confidence and trust. And I know Justin Fields has not necessarily performed to the point where you could sit there and trust him like a veteran, like Dalton. But I thought the whole narrative was you're playing him so he could get reps. So which is it? Why are you playing him then? Why are you playing Justin Fields if you're purposefully making sure he gets no reps or limited reps, reduced reps? Why? Why is Justin Fields averaging around 24 to 25 throws per game? And Andy Dalton's in, that's 37. How does that make sense? How can you make a comparison? How do you know who's better? And one of them's thrown the ball more than the other. The whole push to put in Justin Fields was to get the guy reps. And when his backup is in, he gets more reps in game than Justin Fields. Does that make sense to anybody? That add up in your head. Rookie quarterback, in to get reps, trying to get better, trying to show growth, throw less. Use them less. Andy Dalton, veteran, know what he could do, brought in to basically be a backup, throw the ball more. Why did the game plans change just down the quarterback like that? Should be the other way around. Seriously, I mean, typically in the NFL, if you have your backup come in, it's more of a running football game. Think in the past. And like, great example would be Tavares Jackson, Seattle Seahawks. Whenever he came into a game, I believe Russell Wilson, Wilson got hurt, it became a running game. Think of the Bears, Jason Campbell. Remember Jason Campbell, when he came in, it became a running game. Everybody knew Campbell couldn't throw the ball past 20 yards. Time to run the football. 
See what you could do. It'd be a waste of a game. Chase Daniel would Chase Daniel put up any numbers. Would Matt Nagy throw the ball with Chase Daniel 50 times? No. Run the football. Backups in. But yet here, it's the opposite. Rookie quarterback trying to develop him. Let's throw the ball less. That makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. And that's just a small thing. That's a small thing that I've missed over the past week. That game was a freaking joke. You know what I find despicable, too? Why the hell are you celebrating? I really want to swear right now, but I know because of FCC regulations, I won't. But why in the hell are you celebrating? What do you have to celebrate about? You beat the freaking Lions 0-10-1 on a field goal. That should have been a blowout game. Yay, we kicked a 28-yarder to win. Are you kidding me? That's what we're happy about. That's what we're celebrating. Oh, open up the doors to Club Dub. Yay, Matt Nagy. What? Hey, the Bears are only one game out of a playoff spot. That's the conclusion you take from that game. That's it. Not pathetic showing. Barely won. Is Matt Nagy fired? No, it's... Love dub, Bears win. One game out of a playoff spot. They are not going anywhere. And if you were actually impressed by a win like that, go root for another team. Because obviously your standards have sunk to zero. Obviously. No other explanation. And the players could be so happy, they could celebrate. I don't care. Good for you. You beat the Lions. John, you've never played in the NFL. You don't know what you're talking about. Maybe I don't. Here's what I do know, though. The Lions are the worst team in football. You have a rookie quarterback whom you didn't play because he was hurt. You let Andy Dalton play better than Justin Fields when... The Bears faced the Lions earlier. You let them throw the ball more. It took you a long drive at the end of the game, and it took a 28-yard field goal to win. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to have a problem with that. How pathetic. Seriously. How pathetic. That's what you're celebrating. And we hear about the fire naggy chants all over. Look, at his son's football game, that's a bit much, I'll admit. Everywhere else, keep talking. Keep talking. On his son's football game. Even I got boundaries. Even I got a heart. But everywhere else, keep talking. Keep talking and saying it out loud. And have everybody hear it. Have it be a news story. Everybody needs to know. Like what I said last year, boycott. If you boycott, let them see it. Make them lose money. There's no shame in doing that. But unfortunately, Bears fans are loyal to a fault, and they never would do that. I'm not buying merch. I'm not going to games. This team sucks. Needs to be changed. Make your voices heard. Have everybody see how much of a joke this is. You know, I don't see any other fan base around the NFL going to Bulls games and chanting to fire their coach. Keep it up. That's great. Illini games. Keep it up. (sighs) Just remember, for those of you who've known me for a while, I said last year, Matt Nagy's the problem. Nobody listened. It's Mitch Trubisky's fault. Well, you could say Mitch had his limitations. I was on Matt Nagy. You don't see that by now, you got a problem. Celebrating over beating the Lions. Are you kidding me? You're going to get your ass handed to you this weekend. 
I don't care who's playing. I don't care if it's Kyler Murray. I don't care if it's Justin Fields or Andy Dalton. You're going to get your ass handed to you. But no, let's celebrate a Thanksgiving win against the freaking Detroit Lions. Yay for us. Party it up. How pathetic. The Bears are not winning this game this weekend. I hope you understand that. I wouldn't even waste your time watching it. Probably going to be Kyler Murray coming back off injury. Versus right now, Andy Dalton. Dalton's taking first team reps right now. Who do you think is going to win? Hmm. Arizona, top defense, good run game, good quarterback when healthy. Who do you think is going to win that game? Really think the Bears are going to pull it out? No. It ain't going to happen. I don't care if they're at home. No, oh, Arizona's a warm weather team. They play in the dome. Doesn't matter. Arizona's winning this game. And as for the Bears, if they somehow sneak into the playoffs, good for them, I guess. If they somehow win out and make it in, congratulations. I mean, there's nothing you could do about that. I hope, though, that ownership's mind is done. There's no changes. There's no audibles. There's no, well, if you do this, maybe we'll keep you. No. Everybody needs to go immediately. Everybody. You know, guys are quitting on this team. How the hell did the Bears have so many guys on IR last week? And this is like the last year Mark Trestman again. Oh, Brandon Marshall, Martellus Bennett, everybody's on the IR. Jake Cutler, everybody. What? For what? Because you freaking lost the team. Nobody wants to play for you anymore. Same thing here. Nobody wants to play for Matt Nagy. And everybody could say, because I saw Eddie Jackson come out and say, oh, stop with the fire Nagy chant. That's so wrong. We saw the report. The report said players don't support Nagy anymore. And it came from last year, and they kept him around. What does that tell you about the Chicago Bears, how they treat their players? This place looks like a dumpster fire right now. What free agent would want to come here? Hmm, let's see. I'm going to go to the Bears, where they don't even prioritize their players. They're more worried about their head coach. Or I could go to any other team in the NFL where it'd be different. Where my needs would matter. The team's needs would matter. See what I mean? And let's not even forget about the fact that they handled this entire thing poorly. The whole Matt Nagy report. Poorly. Nagy didn't even go out and answer questions. Chris Tabor did. Nagy canceled meetings and all kinds of stuff happening behind the scenes we didn't even know about, and then he's still there for now. Okay, well, on January 10th, that morning, he's going to be fired. I don't get what's been accomplished. I don't get why this just continues to happen year in and year out. But I'm pretty sick of it. Aren't you? Aren't we all sick of this? Why the hell do the Bears have to be so mediocre each and every year? Why is Matt Nagy always being stuck up for? I mean, this is only recent. Fire Nagy chance. Last year was way different. Matt Nagy, offensive genius. Now we see with Justin Fields how things are going, and now everybody is caught up. Could have caught on before. For those of you who are late to the party, thanks for coming. Vance Dean's a horrible head coach. And a lapping stock for a team. How do you think the NFL views the Bears? Look around the league at all these great teams. Great systems, even. Look at New England. They're winning. No Tom Brady, who cares? Winning with a rookie quarterback. Tampa Bay, winning. Kansas City, still winning. And the Bears. 
Even the Browns are 500. Telling you, the Bears are the Browns now. Said that for about a year and a half, and I mean it when I say it. The Bears are the Browns. Just a real shame how low this franchise has gone. How much lower they're going to go before real change comes. And how even though they've been low, no change has happened. Matt Nagy needs to be fired. He should have been fired a long time ago. Still here. Now we're hearing reports, oh, maybe Ryan Pace will stick around. Ryan Pace needs to go too. The hell has he done? Oh, he got a great third round pick. I don't care. Trade it up for Justin Fields. Again, too little, too late. He hired Matt Nagy or had a say in it. And look at this roster right now. Look at this team. All the money that's been spent. The veterans that suck. What's supposed to come? Nothing. Who does that reflect on? The GM. Think about this. Ryan Pace has been here during our trust. John Fox, Matt Nagy, three different coaches, two different quarterbacks now. There is no GM in football that gets that many chances to get it right. Still fails, gets another chance. They all need to go. Shouldn't be fighting in the comments or fighting on Twitter. Oh, well, Nagy's more responsible than Pace. Pace should stay. Nagy should go. Nagy should stay. Pace should. No, no, no. They all should go. That's it. Add an up. They suck. And I hope that Justin Fields is okay. That echoed what I said from the beginning of the year. Shouldn't play him. Going to get hurt. You could chide that remark all you want. Well, it's the NFL. He's going to get hurt. Well, now he is hurt. Because, get this, no protection. Huh. Where have you heard that before? Shouldn't be running out of rookie quarterback when you have no protection for him. You know, he leads the league in fumbles. Again, no protection. Did you miss me? <laughs> you could tell me. You could be honest with me. Did, did you miss me? Happy to be back. Appreciate all of you who reached down with well wishes. And for everybody's sake, hope the Bears bite the bullet. Fire Matt Nagy and Brian Pace. Thanks for watching today's show here at BPOD TV, channel 59.3 and Roku. Really appreciate the time. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook at John Zagluel. If you want to watch more of these shows, search up Sports Talk Chicago or go to sportstalkchicago.com. Mark Medina will join me this week to talk about some NBA news, so make sure to tune in for that. Thank you again for bearing with me. As I was sick, I'm happy to be back and great to give opinions on Chicago sports. So long, everybody.